Hello YouTube. I'm going to make a homemade bench grinder. I have a real nice, just like new Dayton one horsepower blower fan motor. Well, I bought it for five dollars from a junk guy. I started out two dollars and he had a fit. So I got up to five dollars and he he looked at it. Well, there's no way to plug it in. There's no cord. Well, I shoved the wires into a drop cord he had, made sure it worked. It was only six months old when I got it. Well, after I took it off the big blower fan thing, uh, another guy walked up and told him they cost about $150 new, so I got to laugh, laugh. This is the part that comes out of a four and a half inch bench grinder that holds your blade. Here's your pieces, okay? Now, it goes down in the grinder. This part goes through the bearing. This is what you see sticking out. So this goes through the bearing. Here's where your gear goes on. This goes down into another bushing in the housing. So we're going to use this to our advantage and chuck this in the lathe because we have to take down this diameter. This was a coupler that came off like a pressure washer or something, 5 8 shaft. And I started cutting it right here and I decided, nah, I better make it a little longer. Well, I could have went ahead and made it that short, but I'm not changing it. We left a little shoulder here because we had it in the lathe. Had kind of an improvised tail stock piece so it didn't wobble and shake all over because I can't tell you the diameter of this. Uh, it's actually too big to put in that nano lathe because this thing is like one and a quarter inches so it's almost too big to be sticking in there so there's a lot of heft to it. So we run it at a pretty low speed, speed it up slowly. We got it bored out. It had threads in here and they're a really oddball metric thread or whatever it was. A standard bolt wouldn't fit in there. I had tried putting this on a grinder and put a bunch of Teflon tape to hold the bolt. That didn't work. You can see the rest of it. It was kind of dangerous. The stone came loose, so we don't need that. Throw that away. Anyway, back to the story. We have to take some of the diameter off this so this fits in here. And when we are done, we are going to braze this. Because we do not want a chance welding it and all that. We want to heat it up. To an even temperature, we want to braise it. It'll almost be like sweat brazing. It will be taking the braise down into the metal. Okay, I've done that on pieces before. They've held together. We're plenty far away from where the screw goes. And these screws have, bear with me, that is ready. These screws have a little tit on there, tip, where it just fits in the slot of the shaft so you don't need a keyway and that's just how the pulley was on the thing it had the same screw I have the pulley somewhere so I ended up with a pulley that was worth five to ten dollars on top of it all and don't know what I did with it but we're putting it for the pulley so this is what we'll be doing uh, the next part you'll see this where I'm fitting this in here and then we'll have a clip when we have it brazed and everything. This is the one we're using. It seems like a little better one. I have it marked which one I want. So we're going to use this one. This seems like a little bit better one than this one because this one the threads were kind of crappy and everything. It was on another older grinder. This grinder was only about a year old. So that's the project. Turn that down on the lathe. Get that to fit in there. Braze it. That motor runs about if I remember correct, 3,400, 3,450 RPM. So we'll be able to use sanding disc for the four and a half inch grinder. Might not use cutter blades, but stones and everything. So we can make a homemade grinder. We can sand on stuff, do different things. It won't be as fast as a four and a half inch grinder, but it'll still make a nice bench grinder. So on with the work. Less talking, more work. We got our digital calipers out here. This is not exact. There may be a little bit of run out because this had like a step in here even after I cut off the threads and I had to take that step out of there to get to the same diameter and it's still a little bit bigger than this end which is 5 8. So it's going to be kind of a custom fit. We're going to lay it down. We're going to keep checking it, keep checking it. This is pretty straight here. What we'll do is we'll chuck it in the lathe. We'll have the tail stock on here. A nice little dimple for the tail stock. There's enough room already measured. And we'll be able to 
thin this and make sure it's straight before we braise it. So we'll make sure it's not wobbly. So, enough explaining. I want to make this too long. This will just be part one. I will include pictures of the nice motor. It's not cleaned up. It's a little dirty, but it's good enough to take pictures of. It's a pretty nice motor. It's a really nice motor there. So, thanks for watching.